And on top of the impact of sanctions on the economy, today the Bank of Canada raised interest rates for the first time in four years. And that will lead to a jump in all other borrowing rates for mortgages, credit cards and lines of credit and so on. The central bank increased the benchmark rate from 0.25% to 0.5%, and a series of additional small increases is expected over the course of this year. How well prepared are Canadians to deal with shocks from sanctions and rising interest rates? Let's bring in Pedro Antonesh. He's the chief economist for the Conference Board of Canada. Uh, Mr. Antonesh, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Look, I'll, I'll get to the increase in the interest rates in a moment, but let's talk a little bit about the warning from the federal government that more sanctions to come against Russia could also have an impact on the Canadian economy. What should we be watching for and what kind of an impact could it have? Well, I, I think for the most part, uh, I mean, it's it's tough to know ex precisely what Canadian companies uh, may have, uh, you know, uh, risk with uh, involvement in, the, uh, in Russia directly, uh, including some of our banks. We don't think there's a major um, uh, risk there. Um, when we look at our trade picture with Russia, we export very little to, to Russia. About 0.1% of our exports uh, go to Russia. And a little bit more than that, about 0.35% of our imports come from Russia. So even there, and by the way, the imports are widespread over a wide range of industries or, or products. So again, we don't see a lot of exposures there. I, I think the risks really are going to be much more on the indirect uh, effects. Uh, you know, Canada is already facing high inflationary pressures. Uh, Russia produces a, a lot of, uh, you know, it's a big economy. It's right. an economy that's uh, just slightly smaller than our own, um, but a big resource producer, a big producer of uh, uh, grains and oil, uh, oil seeds, sunflower seeds in particular, uh, and some other products that are going to feed into the supply chain and affect uh, global prices. I mean, we're, the obvious impact is on uh, energy prices right away. Sure. Okay, let's talk about the increase in the Bank of Canada interest rate, a, a quarter point increase to 0.5%. It's the first increase, as I noted, in four years. Uh, and the bank notes in the announcement today that the war in Ukraine is now a major source of economic uncertainty. So I guess I'm wondering, let's start there. Why has the bank decided now is finally the time to move rates higher? Yeah, well, I, I think the bank had uh, kind of clued us all into the fact that they were going to start raising uh, rates in March. I mean, early on in the pandemic, the bank had uh, kind of uh, put forth that they were going to hold interest rates flat for a very long time. But of course, what we started to see was mounting inflationary pressures. Uh, the last number that came from StatsCan was 5.1% uh, inflation year over year uh, in December of, uh, of 2021. So uh, the bank, I think, is you know just acting on a lot of these pressures that uh, uh, we're all concerned about, which are, will inflation expectations become unanchored? Will, you know, households and businesses start to plan for higher prices and thus build those into their uh, to their uh, not only the wage increases but the price increases for products and if you do end up with that kind of situation that's what concerns the bank the most it's this kind of vicious cycle of wages leading to price increases so yeah. I think the bank is it's the bank's challenge right now is one of credibility. Um, so it uh, had announced that it was going to raise uh, rates. Uh, I think it was pretty firm in that uh, in that uh, in the messaging there. Uh, we're going to probably see an, a series of other rate hikes through the year as well. Right. So can you know as you touched on, Canadians were warned this was coming, and now it's here. Um, mm -hmm. How will the rising rates? You've touched on it a bit. Affect. You know, let's look specifically at those heavily indebted Canadian families already coping with rising prices for food and gas and now facing higher borrowing rates. So what's the message for them here? Is, 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 is there some way they can better protect themselves about what's coming? Yeah, I, th I think, Peter, you know, the good news has been that uh, through this pandemic, there has been a massive amount of support that's come through, you know, the, the emergency uh, funds uh, to households and businesses. Uh, so when we look at household balance sheets, they're in, they're in pretty good shape, despite the fact that we've just come out of a really significant recession. Um, households with that amassed savings that we saw over the past two years have paid down credit card debt uh, and higher interest debt, uh, where they've, uh, you know, <laughs> taken advantage 
advantage of low interest rates has been in real estate. They've really ramped up the amount of debt on mortgages and uh, and and purchasing real estate. So I, I think the implication here is that as these rates rise, yes, of course they're going to have some impact, especially for uh, uh, folks that perhaps took on new mortgages and and they're not fixed rates, uh, not fixed over two or three or five years or variable rate. Those those folks will see some impact, but I think uh, really 25 basis points is still fairly minor. Um, what we're uh, concerned about, of course, is as interest rates continue to ramp up, uh, you know, we are going to see that taking a toll on longer term rates. And as people see their uh, mortgages turn over, uh, they are going to feel the pinch, uh, the pinch from this. There's no doubt about it. it, it but I don't think it'll be immediate. OK. And is your sense, just in the 30 seconds or so we have left, is it your sense that um, most of, of, of uh, let's talk housing because it's a big one. Most most of the people in the housing market, uh, given the kind of rules we have around borrowing and so on and mortgages, do you think that the, most of them are largely equipped to, to handle what we should expect by way of increases over the next couple of years? Yeah, no, I think uh, with the uh, the prudence that we have when you uh, take on a new mortgage, you have to actually qualify for a fairly uh, much higher rate uh, than you are actually going to get. So that leaves uh, you know a fair amount of flex in uh, in uh, um, in the pockets of or in the ability of households to you know absorb some of these higher rates. It, it's uh, there's no doubt there's going to be a challenge down the road because we do have a massive amount of debt uh, in real estate. But mm -hmm. if hopefully prices hold. Uh, the equity is building. Um, the values are there. People will. We won't see an, an you know a major impact on on default rates. All right, uh, Pedro Antonish. Always good to get your perspective. Uh, thanks again for providing it tonight. Take care. Take care, Peter. Bye bye.